Vitamin D is probably one of the most important vitamins that you aren't giving enough attention to. A deficiency in vitamin D not only increases your risk of developing unwanted symptoms like depression, fatigue, and muscle weakness, it's also associated with more serious conditions like obesity, cancer, and diabetes. That's not going to be a problem for you though because I'm gonna teach you how to raise your vitamin D level quickly so you don't have to worry about these consequences. Here are three different methods that you can start using right now. Number one is called the sunlight method. This is by far the best and most natural method on this list, so if you're gonna start anywhere, this is the place to start. This method harnesses the power of the sun, which is a natural therapy to help activate vitamin D inside of your body. Here's how it works. During exposure to sunlight, your skin absorbs UVB rays and creates pre-vitamin D3. Pre-vitamin D3 is then activated by your liver and kidneys to create 25-hydroxy vitamin D and 125-dihydroxy vitamin D. The rate limiting step here is almost always sunlight exposure, not the activation in your kidneys or liver. This is why you'll always hear people talk about how important sunlight is when you want to raise vitamin D levels. When it comes to getting sunlight, there are only a few ways to do it right and a whole lot of other ways to do it incorrectly. If you don't expose yourself long enough to sunlight or if you go out at the wrong time of the day, it won't help. So with that in mind, here are some tips and guidelines that you can follow if you want to optimize your vitamin D using only sunlight. Make sure that you get in the sunlight long enough. The ideal time frame is somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes every day. Next, make sure that the sun is in the right position. The easiest way to tell is by assessing your own shadow. If your shadow is shorter than your own height, then you know the sun is in the optimal position. If your shadow is longer than you, then you know it's either too early in the day or too late in the day. Next is to make sure enough of your skin is exposed to sunlight. You want at least 40% of your total skin surface area to be exposed for maximal conversion. For a man, this means wearing something just like shorts, and for a woman, this means being in a swimsuit. Next, make sure that you are not wearing any sunscreen. Sunscreen is a potent blocker of UVB radiation. SPF 50, for example, will block about 98% of all UVB rays, making all the time you spend in the sun meaningless. Feel free to apply sunscreen to your face to protect the skin on your face from things like aging, but leave sunscreen off the rest of your body if you're trying to optimize your vitamin D status. Next, make sure you don't spend time out in the sun if it's overcast or if there are clouds outside. Clouds block about 70 to 90% of UVB radiation, which means your time spent in the sun is not going to be valuable. And finally, in terms of duration, if you have a lighter skin color, you may need to spend less time out in the sun. Look for a length of time which causes your skin to become a little bit pink, but does not cause a sunburn. Even though sunlight is definitely the best way to get vitamin D inside of your body, it doesn't work well for everybody based on their location. Some locations around the globe simply do not get enough sun, or when they do get sun, the angle of the sun is incorrect due to their latitude. For this reason, we also have to talk about vitamin D supplements. And this brings us to number two, which is the supplement method. If you can't get all of your vitamin D from the sun, then the use of vitamin D supplements will be necessary. And when it comes to vitamin D supplements, there are a few things that you should know. The first is which type of vitamin D you should be using. This one is actually really simple. You should always be looking for a vitamin D3 supplement and not a vitamin D2 supplement. This is because there have been more studies done on vitamin D3 showing that it increases vitamin D levels inside of the serum far more than vitamin D2 will. The second has to do with the dose of vitamin D that you're taking. This one can get a little bit complicated because it depends on a lot of other factors such as how much you weigh, your total amount of fat mass, and how much is getting absorbed when you take your vitamin D. Ideally, what you would do is you would test your vitamin D first and then take vitamin D supplements and then reassess after a couple of months to see how it has changed your level. But unfortunately, it's not always possible to check your vitamin D first or it's just impractical. So supplementing without testing for vitamin D makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. Personally, I don't bother to test my vitamin D level very often, but I do get out in the sun as often as I can and when I can't, I take a vitamin D supplement. Based on my own experience, a safe range to supplement with is somewhere between the range of 2,000 to 5,000 IUs of vitamin D3 daily. If you are somebody that is overweight, then you may need a dose much higher and as high as 10,000 IUs per day. This is because vitamin D is stored in the fat, so if you have a higher amount of fat in the body, it will take a higher dose to saturate those tissues before it raises your serum level. 
For reference, the RDA for vitamin D is set at around 600 to 800 IUs per day, but I have personally found that this is not enough to raise vitamin D levels in most people. The third thing you need to be aware of is if you are taking vitamin D supplements, there are additional supplements that you can take to enhance the effectiveness of the vitamin D. Included in this list would be magnesium and vitamins A and K2. Magnesium is included here because it's required for the activation of vitamin D in your body. All of the major enzymes which activate vitamin D use magnesium as a cofactor. And because of stress, magnesium deficiency is very common. If you are somebody who is deficient in vitamin D, then there's a very good chance you are also deficient in magnesium. Vitamin A is another fat-soluble vitamin that can be taken with vitamin D, which works synergistically with it. Taking vitamin A with vitamin D protects against toxicity of both. Vitamin K2 will make sure that the calcium that increases after you take vitamin D will not stay in your arteries, but will instead go to the places that you want it, like your bones. The combination of vitamin K2 and vitamin D is both great for your bones as well as your heart health. And finally, if you want to make sure that when you take your vitamin D supplement that it gets absorbed into your body, you wanna make sure that you're taking it with a fatty meal. This is because vitamin D does not dissolve in water. So taking your vitamin D with breakfast or another fatty meal will ensure that it makes it into your bloodstream where it can have its desired effect. The third way to optimize your vitamin D status is the method that we should probably all be using, and that is the combination method. The combination method takes advantage of sunlight, supplements, as well as your diet. In general, foods are not the single best source of vitamin D because they're not that concentrated in it. For example, the richest sources of vitamin D from foods include cod liver oil, which has around 1300 IUs of vitamin D per serving, trout, which has about 645 IUs of vitamin D per serving, and salmon, which has about 570 IUs of vitamin D per serving. But when was the last time you had any of these foods on a consistent daily basis? For perspective, you would have to have at least one of them every single day to meet the bare minimum RDA for vitamin D. Yes, vitamin D can still be found in other foods such as eggs, but each serving only has about 40 IUs of vitamin D, making it a very weak overall source of vitamin D. Despite food containing some amount of vitamin D, sunlight and supplements are far more consistent sources. So it's best to get what you can from food, but don't neglect the other two. Having said that, sunlight isn't perfect either. The reality is that a lot of us are too busy due to social life or other commitments to spend 20 minutes out in the sun each and every day when the sun is at its highest. But what you can do is take advantage of natural sunlight and foods that are high in vitamin D every chance that you get and make up the difference with supplements. I personally try to get out in the sun at least three times per week, but when I can't, I supplement with a vitamin A, D, K2 supplement. This strategy works really well for me and I have a feeling it will work really well for you as well. When you combine food, diet, and supplements, you create a potent combination that will help you keep your vitamin D status optimal all year round. Improving your vitamin D status will have a big impact on your entire body, including your mood, hormones, blood sugar, and more. If you can apply one or more of these three methods that I've just listed consistently for 30 to 60 days, you should see a big improvement in your vitamin D level and your symptoms. And after watching this video, if you still aren't convinced that optimizing your vitamin D level is important, I'd recommend checking out this video next, which highlights the serious consequences of what happens if you ignore your vitamin D.